Oh, praise be to your holy name, Father. And, Father, I'm really asking blessings to be upon this video. Let your light and your glory shine. And put peace upon people. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Well, <clears throat> my last video, I was talking about Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And I felt very led by the Spirit to read Romans chapter 8 again, but this time out of the King James Bible. I, I want to make it very clear who we are in this times of disaster because people are running around scared, upset uh, about them doing whatever they're going to do with the food stamps. Um, but believe me, nobody's going to put a chip in me. I, I mean, I can survive. I can survive because the Father has appointed angels to take care of us, just like he did Elijah out in the desert when he went out there and the raven brought him food. You know, our Father, our God, is a mighty God. But let me read chapter 11, I mean chapter 8 from Romans in the King James Bible, which is almost wore out. Father, I'm going to have to get a new one. <laughs> there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. And we know that Israel had all of these things they had to do. Whenever they sinned, they would have to bring in a sacrifice for the priest to sprinkle the blood and, and have their sins forgiven. Well, their flesh was weak. And it was hard to follow that law as it was. God, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, you and I, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled. And he did. He said, I didn't come to destroy, I come to fulfill. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. The wants, the desires, the lust. And if they think that it's about to leave them, you know, they become very fearful. And go, oh my, what can I do now? What should I do? Oh Lord, forgive me, what should I do? Trust in Him. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So therefore it's saying we need to be, have the mind of the Spirit. We should be after the Spirit, not after the flesh. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because a carnal mind is intimate against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Because the desires of the heart cannot be submissive to God unless it is spiritual. So then they are in the flesh, cannot please God. But ye are not part, 
<clears throat> but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. You hear what I'm saying? We're not of the flesh, but of the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. And when you come into the blood of Yeshua and are covered by him, that spirit of God dwells in us. Now, if any man hath not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead. This thing is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life. That spirit person that's inside this flesh is a lie because of righteousness. We must surrender it all to him. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwell in you. Praise the Lord. He shall quicken, quicken your mortal bodies. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For at many, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. King James Bible. For ye have not received a spirit of bondage again to fear. Hmm. Very plain. We don't receive that spirit of bondage again to fear. So why is everybody running around fearful and crying out to other people to help? You know, like Elizabeth said in her statement, you know, people are so fearful and wanting to know what to do. Uh, trust in Yeshua, Jesus Christ. But ye have received the spirit of adoptions, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So we are heirs, heirs to what has been promised to Christ is promised to us. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So why fear? For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory, glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation waiteth, for the manifestation of the sons of God. It waits for us to be revealed, to come forth. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reasoning of him who hath subject the same in hope. Because the creation itself, but, but because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And so that this earth, with all its decay and, and the factor of death, everything has to die. I mean, it's autumn. The leaves are falling from the trees. They will be without tr leaves. They will be dead all winter in, in a s state of sleep until spring. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travails the pain together until now. They will be released from that curse. What a glorious time it will be. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first roots of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Praise the Lord. Yes, I eagerly wait and groan. Because my body does get tired. For we are served, saved by hope. By hope that is seen is not hope. For what is, 
What is a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? So if you can see the end result already, then you wouldn't have nothing to hope for. But we have not seen the end result yet. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Hmm, helps our infirmities. Anything that's happening to us physically, the Spirit's there to help us. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself must intercede for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And that this has happened many a times with me when I've had physical and, and, and emotional needed help, you know, uh, when distress has come. The Spirit knows exactly how to pray and groan and he that searches the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God not the will of man but unto the will of God he knows our needs he knows everything and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called and to them who are the called according to his purpose for when he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be confirmed to the image of his son we are predestinated to become confirmed to the image of Yeshua Jesus Christ that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. We are his brothers. Moreover whom he did predestinate that he also called. So he has called us. And whom he called them he also justified. So he cleanses us of our sins. Not that we can go back into it. We have to stay out of it. But he's the one that forgives and he's the one that cleanses. And when, and whom he justifies, then he also glorifies. And we're going to be glorified one day soon. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, all ha <clears throat> how shall he not? with him also freely let me see let me, let me reread this he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things plain he gives us all things man doesn't governments doesn't he does who shall lie anything to charge of God's elect if God that justifies, who is he that condemns? If, he con if we are condemned, whoever is condemning is not of God. Is Christ that died? Yea, brother, that he rose again, who in it ever at the right hand, he arose again, who is even at the right hand, of God who also maketh intercessions for us he makes intercessions he talks to the Father all the time about us who shall separate us from the love of Christ my question it's in, the, in, in King James Bible who shall separate us from the love of Christ who shall tribulations our distress, our persecutions, our famine, our nakedness, our peril, our sword. That is written, For thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loveth us. For I am persuaded, and I am persuaded, as Paul was, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, 
Satan, nor our powers, Satan, nor things present, nor things to come, neither heights, nor depths, nor any other creation shall be able to separate us from the love, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And even Jesus, Yeshua, said that we should not fear, uh, we should not worry about what we're going to eat, nor worry about the clothes on our back. He said, didn't, uh, didn't he, he make the lilies of the field more glorious than all of Solomon's stuff? I mean, he feeds the birds in the air. He's the one that takes care of us. Yes, I know people get fearful. And sometimes people around here will come and say, Why are you so at peace, Barbara? And I say, It's easy. I am called and chosen of him. Nothing can separate me from the love of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Nothing, period. No man, nor power, no nothing. Uh, they just can't do it because I am sealed and covered in Him. And I know it's a fearful time. I mean... You got the food stamp thing, and yeah, they pass on a law, and and um, I looked it up, and the first things are they're going to try to probably do is they'll probably put it in a card and and fingerprint you and put your picture on it and do all this stuff, and then the next route would be putting it into your skin. Well. I'm not going to take a chip. I'm just not, you know, um, because I don't want the government tracking me wherever I go. You know, anyway, they they can pretty well do it anyway. If you got a cell phone, they can track you. If uh, you've got a credit card or a bank card, they can track you. I mean, you know, they pretty well know where we're at at all times. But I'm saying to you today, I am saying to you today in the spirit of the Ruh Kadesh, that Yeshua loves you, and He will take care of you. He will hold you in His hand and take care of you. And I know some people are, are really excited about this asteroid that's supposed to be coming by the closest point that it's ever has uh, or something tomorrow about 5 o'clock here in Arkansas. I, I'm sorry, you know, that doesn't upset me. Yes, I felt the earthquake in Oklahoma City that happened and I rejoice in the Father for him keeping his hands on people and nobody was hurt or harmed. Only a few buildings were, you know, shaken around and you may say, well, well boy, that's that's pretty harmful if you lose your home. Well, I, I you know what? Years and years and years ago when I was married to my ex-husband, we had a trailer house burned down. And yes, it's devastating. But you know what? Yeshua took care of us. Next day, we had a house to move into. All of a sudden, things were given to us to help us out because of the fire. Things that were happening that we didn't even expect. And yes, I was, I was sad, you know. Um, that it happened, and and my kitty was in there, and it, it, it died in the fire, and that really, you know, made me sad. 
But you know what? We were gone from that house. We were totally 100% protected. Now, if the new Mandarin goes off down here in Arkansas, we will be protected. If it's time for me to go home through death, I mean, I'd rather see him coming after me. But if it's through death, so, so be it. I'll go home. I'm going home. Do you understand? I'm going home. I, I will be able to see his face. I will be able to kneel at his feet. To reach out and touch his feet. Because I'm not worthy of anything more. I do not fear. Because I know he loves me. And he loves you. If you have rendered your heart to him. Gave it all to him. He says not to fear. Trust in him. Trust in him. Trust in Him even to the point of death and glorify Him and rejoice in Him. All we can hear today is whining and complaining about what's going on around us. But who's praising the Lord? Who, who is rejoicing and then praising in His goodness and in His righteousness, in His protection and in His love? Who's rejoicing? You cannot rejoice and fear at the same time. And fear and peace cannot live in the same house. You need to understand that. You need to quit going to other people, a woman over there or a man over here saying, what should I do? Trust in Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Trust in Him. For He is our shield and our buckler. He will take care of us. And if we are out in the desert, he will make water where there is no water. He will have the raven bring the food to you to eat. But if you fear and you live in fear, then everything that you fear will come up on you and attack you like a huge monster. It will attack you and it will warp your mind and warp your spirit where you become even fearful of God. You'll go, oh, this has to be a great punishment on me. No, it's things that have been prophesied in the Bible long ago. Things are now coming to light and being fulfilled. Because Yeshua is coming soon, and He's going to take His bride. He is going to take His bride. I know that. I trust in Him. He has called us out. He has chosen us. He has predestined for us to become anointed and become the sons of God if we trust in Him. Totally, completely, 100% trust in Him. And instead of going to a person and asking their advice, and when people call me and say, What do you think? What should I do? I say, Trust in Yeshua. Trust in Him. Pray to Him. If you lack faith, ask for faith. If you lack anything spiritual in your life, ask for it. And He will gladly give it to you. 
He is the one that will take care of you. Not a human being, not a government, but He and He alone, Yeshua alone. Because he says, by my stripes you are healed. By his death and his blood our sins are forgiven. And as long as we walk in his righteousness, believing wholly in 100% and trusting in him in everything, he will take care of the matter. But when we let fear and doubt come into our life and begin to take over and we begin to run to and fro seeking one person or another to give us the answers that fear will destroy us so I choose consciously choose to not fear but trust in him in all things and in all ways so when you see this stuff going on, fall on your knees and praise Him. Praise Him that He come and He died for us. Praise Him that we are saved by His grace and His blood. Praise Him for loving us more than anything else and that He would give His life for us. Praise Him above all things. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him at noon. And praise Him in the evening. And while you sleep, have your mind so concentrated on Him, you'll be praising Him in your sleep. For He is your covering. He is your covering. So stop the fear. Stop the fear. And trust in His love. I come today in the name of Yeshua, breaking all these chains that Satan has put upon the, your people, Father. Chains of fear and doubt and depression and anger and the hate of things around. Deliver them. Break those chains right now in the name of Yeshua. How much she break those chains? And let your chosen people come first and walk in faith in you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach.